Frank Tanner joining us right now on the CJ Morgan sh Sorry, we're doing this for Australian Public Radio, <laughs> so it's going to... Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Hey, man, welcome. Uh, you've been at it, the South by Southwest, so far. How are you feeling? How are you doing, first um, off? Uh, I'm feeling about 20 years older than I did on Monday. Uh, I bet. But this is my ninth time at South by Southwest, so I'm familiar with that sort of temporary extreme aging process. With the non-stop crunch of just going and going. I mean, you played yeah. a show this morning for one of our I sister did. stations. Yes, at a time of day that felt decidedly unreasonable. Yeah, Absolutely. you played yesterday, <laughs> plus the jet lag. How do you, uh -huh. how do you as a... Uh, as a musician, as a rock star, how do you keep going? Are you in bed at night, or are you? Are oh, you, are these you hanging days out? I'm in bed at night. Okay, uh, fair like, enough. I mean, there were there were years when I was at South by where I didn't go to bed at all, um, uh, but I'm now in my 40s, which means that I have to sort of behave myself and pay attention to things like my voice. So uh, yeah, I was in bed about half an hour after I got off stage last night. And then I was up about, well, this is the thing, I had to wake up about six hours later. Yeah, and do that thing. I mean, similar with my uh, fiance, I was hanging out last night and I was doing just that, the stupid impression and dumb voices. And she goes, aren't you, isn't your whole thing talking? Yeah. On the, and you're just screwing up your voice, trying yeah. to make me laugh and you're just pissing me off. So yeah, yeah. I get it, we're, we're, there, we're there now. Uh, how does it, how did you go from, being the what uh, a lot of ladies call dream, it is windy as hell right now. Yeah. How did you go from being a very dreamy, amazing singer songwriter? Weren't your your roots were punk and rock? Yeah, punk, punk, rock, and hardcore punk. Actually. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. So. Do, were were you here? South by Southwest in that vein? Uh, one time, 2004. It was million, uh, million... Million Dead. Yeah, yeah, that's band. what I thought. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so good. a little different now, though, right? Yeah, Doing it on uh, your well, own? Yeah, I mean, there's actually, as time has gone by, um, the two sort of sides of what I've done have converged a little bit. Um, there were a couple of songs on my last record and indeed a couple on the forthcoming record, which are, they're not quite hardcore punk songs, but they're kind of, they're sort of gesturing. And the sp spirit is there? Yeah, they're kind of showing a, bit, a little bit of leg in the okay. direction of the All circle right. jerks or whatever. So, um, so you yeah. Can, you can bit. kind of see that too in the energy of your stage show that you, you keep the crowd involved and present. You're just Thank you. fun as hell to watch, but That's there's are there ever moments where you just want to smash a guitar or jump <laughs> into the crowd? And I do, well, I do jump into the crowd um, reasonably regularly. You, not, not elbowing, though, this time. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Just yeah, being yeah. involved with that. Exactly. A bit of crowd surfing goes a long way. Um, no, I mean, I, you know, it's definitely true that, like, my kind of uh, targets, my idols, my inspirations for my live show are very much bands like, you know, Sick of It All or The Chariot or whoever, like that kind yeah. of thing, which, is, which has always made me, I think, a slightly odd proposition i'm playing kind of like sort of folk country influenced rock music kind of thing but trying to play a show like you're in the chrome mags or whatever and yeah 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 it's a cool I, I like to think it's a cool mix it's almost like there's this uh reserved energy that is going to jump out and attack you at any but did moment did you ever feel timid doing it Do, uh, what playing shows or yeah. no going well, almost feeling naked going from oh, playing in a right. band and then uh, by yeah, yourself yeah, yeah. but i mean that's a big part of the reason i did it was because it felt like a challenge i was in hardcore bands for about eight years touring and at the end of it I mean, partly a big part of it is that, you know, my taste of music changed and I was more interested in songwriting than screaming at people. Um, but also, like, you know, having been my old band, we got pretty sort of deliberately obscurantist towards the end or into okay, stuff like, like that. Dillinger Escape Plan, that kind of thing, which I, I love. But it was sort of there's a degree of complexity for its own sake and that kind of thing. And going from that to just sitting down with a guitar and playing G, C and D and then trying to tell a true story. That felt terrifying. That's oh, yeah. kind of why I did it. And it's just mean? you. It's it's right. You can't roll around on the floor and blame blame the drummer and do a noise solo when something goes wrong. Sure. It's just How you. do you feel like you're on that journey? You feel like you're where you want to be? Oh or? yeah, definitely. I mean that that was that, that was 20 years ago now. So um, uh, yeah, I'm definitely comfortable where I am. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. Yeah, that's why you're at South by. For yeah. The first exactly. Time I mean, if, if it was if I would be if I was still having second thoughts 20 years later, that would be like, dude. Well, sometimes some people feel like they never get this, where they want to yeah, go. Yeah, Self doubt never stops. How that, do you, well, how do you yeah, keep that, that at true. bay? But I think self doubt is a very useful um, tool as an artist. I think that pure comfort. I th every artist I know, and myself included, is like a mixture of supreme confidence and raging self doubt. Right. And and it keeps, it's, it's the drive that keeps it's us a going. Spin cycle kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? It's like you like I know exactly what I'm doing, and then you do it for a bit, and then you go, what the, what have I done? This is well, awful. If you believe too much of your own stuff, you get complacent. Right. I mean, I t I've, in terms of advice to younger bands and stuff, I'm always like, be your own harshest critic. 
Get in there first. Like, what's wrong with the last thing you Ooh, recorded? What's one of the really harsh things you still have a hard time pushing out? Oh, well, I mean, I, I mean, to be specific, like, there are kind of, like, uh, if you look to sort of certain records of mine, I'm like, yeah, that production, the kick drum sounds terrible. Like, right. just sort of things like that. Or, like, that song that it's, this tuner repeats the chorus or the verse and the pre-chorus the wrong way around or whatever. You know, trying to be structurally critical of what I do. Um, but... but that 20 year journey has helped you get to a place oh, where yeah. you're starting to feel more confident and, and, and you can push those things out. Yeah, definitely. Although, I mean, there is still the doubt thing. Like, but, and as I say, it's kind of useful. I mean, I don't want to talk about where I am right now as a kind of final destination. I feel like it's still an on ongoing process, you know. And I, I'm, we're here today because I've got my 10th album coming out as a Which solo Which is artist. nuts, yeah. It is. It's, 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 it's a kind of unlikely number of albums. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I'm kind of proud of it. But at the same time, going to what we're talking about here, I try really hard whenever I sit down to make a record to be like, am I doing this for a good reason? Yeah, what I never want to do is make a record because that's what I do and it's probably time. And you, do you can just do I mean? greatest hits albums at that right, point or yeah, a live do, one. Do, so it's like, do yeah. Like the 10 year anniversary of another record tour or whatever. It's like, if I'm going to actually take up your good people's time with talking about new songs I've written, I want them to be, I want to justify them or be able to justify them as like a new thing that I have to say. And I, that's, how, that's how I feel where I am right now. Yeah, I understand that. No, I, I promise to stop if I'm just turning it out. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> no, this is the stuff that I like to hear is what, what keeps us going. And if you've been sure. here for nine times and you've got to be young bands that are looking up to you. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I, 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 I'm definitely um, – one of the things I, in the last few years kind of post-pandemic is kind of settling into a role of kind of being a generation above the newcomers kind of thing, which is objectively true. I'm 42 years old. I'm not like 19 – uh, anymore, but it but still feels like that sometimes. It does. It does. But like you look around at your coworkers and they're like, "No, dude, don't say that. Don't yeah. say no cap to me." I was, that sounds personal for you as well. Yeah, yeah I guess does. so. Yeah. But like, I was chatting with a band the other day, and I, I sort of like, I, I was asking them. They said that they were from a town in the UK that is that I grew up very near, and I sort of said, "Oh, do you know this bar and this venue and this place?" And they were like, "No, that's a and, flat and, now." And I, and I said, "I said, oh, we're talking about like 1998, 99, or whatever," and they're like, "We, we weren't born." Then. We were kids, oh. yeah. And, uh, you know, just telling kids I, I toured before Satnav. That's it, fun as well. They're you like, know, at least you're uh, an artist, you're a musician, because when you're in radio, it's kind of sadder. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you start saying that. That made it really real. Yeah, too. yeah, it does. But uh, I guess just with not just your growth and change, but to, uh, to communicate to the fair humans in the city, playing South by so many years in so many different veins, how, how do you feel like Austin has grown and changed? And are there still moments where when you come here, you're like, ah, there's some, is there something here that still feels familiar? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, when I first came to Austin, it was one of the first places in America I ever came to, which is true for a lot of British people because of South by Southwest. I was like... Because of our similar weather. Well... <laughs> today especially. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but it was like, you know, I was like, I'm, I'm moving to Austin, Texas. That's happening. This place is like a dream place. It's like nothing else. I'm a huge Towns Van Zandt fan, like oh, yeah. else and all that kind of business. But it was... Uh, it's, the city has changed a lot. This view here is pretty different to what it was in... Just a little bit. 2000. You four. can't see the capital anymore. Yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? Like that's wild. Um, but I still feel like there's a kind of there's a there is a chaotic anarchic underside to South by Southwest. That still me, feels very Austin in some yeah, ways. Yeah, I mean, you know, keep Austin weird, all that kind of thing. But it's like you know, there's definitely still kind of. I mean, put it this way, to, to go with what I was just talking about, there's definitely kind of weird house shows taking place out there. I'm not sure that I'm getting invited to them anymore, but I'm not sure that I should Neither be. are we. Yeah. Do you want to come over to my house? Yeah. I live in the suburbs now, cool, but man. Matt yeah. will bring his kids. And we'll drink two beers. Yeah, yeah. And I then love it's it. all right. All yeah. right. It's, it's sleepy time. We'll, have, good, yeah. we'll, yeah, we'll drink, a, drink a coffee after 6 p.m. and <laughs> just see where the night takes us. <laughs> Let's get silly. I absolutely. Man, we are not selling you on this cool no, rock know, station because you are great live show great act Thank really you. fun uh, to see and we're like we're old men and tired and people don't like us anymore but uh <laughs> anything you do in austin uh, when you come and visit or are you pretty much just focus on like because this south by you're doing so many shows yeah yeah i'm pretty i mean south by southwest is usually pretty busy and i come through i'm, I'm coming through in june which i'm very stoked yeah. about uh, for a non-south by show which is gonna be fun a little I more have, relaxing yeah i have a lot of old friends in town people who i've known for 20 years um uh we go swim, swimming at barton springs that's the thing that i quite often do while we're here nice as which as is you should cold but invigorating it does wake you up a little bit yeah, especially definitely. uh but hey it's good for the 
bone, bone aches, yeah. the back pain. <laughs> Dude, and you're the, doing it again. Yeah, like, oh, okay. the wrong way. Hey, CJ, cool, 101X, I rock. Yeah, Look yeah, at my cool. tattoos. <laughs> That's what what kids these days, that's what they like. Uh, Last question, I don't mean to get all like serious and NPR, but you know, we've got to ask like some hard hitting musician stuff because when it comes to the production of a record and the way that, you know, you have so many sound mixers and people putting it together, even though you're doing it solo, in reality, in all actuality, like if you're going to have a perpetual sound for yourself, what would you say is the dumbest instrument and why? <laughs> uh, I mean, oh, okay. serious question. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preface my actual answer with the reason I'm hesitant about this, which was that somebody once asked me a similar question, and I was like, I was, said, I was like, man, I hate the ukulele. Ukulele is a dumb instrument. Just get a guitar and grow be. up. Yeah, yeah. And it turned out the guy I was talking to was the leader of this group called the Ukulele Orchestra, who was about <laughs> oh, to man. tell me, who was about to tell me that they cover <laughs> loads of my songs, and oh. you know, would I like to? Hear all about it and i was like oh cool i'll just just eat my words so That's um, so bad uh i did i did i wrote a song a few years ago called the zeit beast which was based on a strange dream i had about this creature that was like a little dog that was at the zeitgeist in, yeah. in animal form and in the song i mentioned that the clarinet is the one instrument that the zeit beast is not yet engaged with um fair uh, enough and I mean, there was a there was a guy called Acca Bilk who was a clarinet player in the 1950s in the UK. He wasn't cool. It, the clarinet. It's right. not. It's marching band. Uh, I got in trouble yesterday because I was asking uh, the Black Keys. I was like, "What's a dumb instrument?" They said it, and I was like, "Ah, oh, it's funny. You know, uh, Saint Vincent's so quiet." And reserved. And when I asked her, she just was like, oh, I hate the piccolo. And for some reason, the saxophone and uh, uh, Patrick from the band goes, my uncle played on her album. He <laughs> plays sax. And I was like, oh, oh maybe I need wow. to maybe yeah. I need to leave the hacky radio questions uh, to yeah, someone yeah, yeah, else. Sure. Saxophone is an instrument that could be used for great it's, good it, it or can, great evil. It could be in a rock band. All yeah, right. I'm going to say Clarence it. Clemens. Come on. But sure. I mean, you know, then again, the entirety of the soundtrack to kind of sex scenes in the 1980s kind of movies that's the first very side. corny and still current Pornhub movies uh, really films, I w- I wouldn't films know. today Na- me neither honey yeah. uh, <laughs> this conversation is getting real weird I have a lot of friends that are musicians and I've always wanted it. any guy that gets into radio probably wants to be in a band Right. But, you know, you're from the UK. You were probably around when uh, the, the big trip hop, massive attack scene sure. was going. And I yeah. tell them, I'm like, I can't play an instrument, but I could be the whispery British guy in the background. Like, I could do that. <laughs> like, that's why I could do the massive yeah. attack, deep voice, British whispery guy. That was you need very that? good. I enjoyed it. Yeah, that was yes, very good. I can do that in your songs. I can also rap about my dong. I mean, it's like I'm in the room with, um, I can't even remember Is it his Mushroom? name Mushroom? What's his yeah. name? Uh, yeah. d- one of the guys. One of the guys from, yeah, from, um, yeah, from then. <laughs> I could just imagine it. What's the dumbest instrument? You know, there are no dumb instruments. We just play. Anyhow, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're not so. talking about them. We're talking about Frank Turner. Thank you uh, for <laughs> hanging out with us today. Thank you for having me today. I, this I, is a beautiful place to be. It I absolutely can... is, and I'm glad the wind died down during the shitty part of the interview. Yeah, it's definitely. It's my fault, not yours. It's all good. It's <laughs> a beautiful view of everything apart from the capital from up here. Uh, you're going to play some tunes for us? Uh, if you would like. Me too. Are you gonna get mad if I start turning the mic up and whispering? Uh, no, no. I can. If you just, they'll get mad at I'll me. I won't do that. Nod and then you can just sort of blend it. Fade in there. out. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks cool. a lot. Uh, hey, thank hey, you, man. Frank Turner about to play some songs for us. Big round of applause. Thank you.